You're a kid in a neighborhood and you hear your neighbor scuffling in his house and all of a sudden a scream and then something or someone is now locked inside of a room and you, being the courageous little one that you are, must go into your neighbor's house, break in, and free the person from the room. A very smart and clever thing to do. Uh, if you're under 18, please ignore all of my advice here. <laughs> Regardless, that is the game Hello Neighbor, and that is the PC slash Switch and all other kinds of console games where you play as a kid attempting to solve puzzles and get into your neighbor's house, who may or may not be evil. And this here is the Secret Neighbor Party Game by Arcane Wonders and Tiny Build, the guys who make Secret Neighbor. It's a very hit popular game. I was actually lucky enough to try out the... Alpha back when they were first doing it. I got to try the first like the beginning of the game And I would say that the PC one still has a little bit of ways to go as far as uh, some glitches and bugs But nevertheless a fun game and one I've always enjoyed and actually did purchase on switch and this one here I've been lucky enough to get a copy from arcane wonders to take a look at this trader based game in which you're either going to be a secret neighbor a neighbor or a kid if you are the kids you're going to need to acquire three keys, or I should say up to three keys, depending on the number of players in the game. And you'll get these like keys in the actual party game and you'll be collecting them through trials and tribulations. You'll be gathering items and trying to collect sets of those items in this trading phase. And then if you do gather your set, you'll be able to use them throughout the game and attempt to gather a key or find out a secret identity of one of your neighbors, or perhaps stop an ability from being used, or steal a card from an opponent's hand, and so on and so forth, and depending on the number of players, how many cards will be distributed, how long certain things take, and of course you can have a timed method, as well as when you want to play spells, certain unique, uh, what do you call it, unique variations can involve you tapping the board here. But it is a game similar to Resistance, something you've probably heard before, heard of before, a little secret deductive, try to figure out who's the neighbor and who's not I'll show you down below what it comes with and how to play the game for the most part and then we'll come up and I'll discuss secret neighbor and whether or not you should pick it up welcome to the house and here is what's included you're going to be getting an item deck where you'll be collecting these throughout the game and if you get a certain number of them you'll be able to utilize them like the flashlight the trash can the magnet and the box and lever some uh, unique object cards as well as more additional cards depending on the number of players is how many you'll be using and it tells you the top right hand side how many players is required so this is a six or more game then it also has roll cards here you might be a neighbor which is the bad guy, per se. You have the kids here, all the different kids. And then you also have your secret neighbor. A neighbor is the same thing as a secret neighbor, but the secret neighbor uh, is not able, you do not see other neighbors. So he does not get to see who the other neighbors are. And that's pretty much it as far as the different classes go. I got some unique little things here. This is actually a free skin for a spy neighbor skin in the Secret Neighbor PC game. So if you're watching this video and we're one of the first people and you can read this code, go ahead and enter that in and booyah bing, you get a free skin. It's only good for one person. So if you're watching this, you might not have been lucky. These are the three keys you get. Nice, hard quality, high, high quality, hard plastic keys. They're thick and sturdy and look just like the keys from the game. This is the box for the game and a place for you to put your keys. And this box can be used in the variant of the game in which you can go ahead and use powers. And then, of course, you have your player aid cards. These tell you what all the different weapons will do. There is the guide to the game or rule book. And then there's a quick start guide, which will tell you how to play the game fairly quickly. The first thing you'll do is you pick a leader. And after you pick out a leader, you'll deal out the roll cards, depending on the number of players. Like I said, it tells you the top there. And it also tells you how many different types of roles will be in the game. So in a six player game, you're gonna have four kids, one neighbor, and one secret neighbor. Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? And then after that, you'll deal out your object cards, and then you're going to do a trading phase. And then you're going to set out your keys. And then after that, players are going to play their cards. As long as they were able to trade for certain cards they wanted, they can then play cards that will enact them to be able to get the keys, maybe steal a key, maybe learn something about somebody's role, 
etc cetera, etc cetera, right and of course with more players comes more cards in the game and when trading happens it's pretty simple you're going to start with a certain number of cards in your hand i believe it's four and then you're going to offer trades you're like i have a box what do you have a flashlight oh i need a flashlight i'll trade you and then you can go ahead and trade now what's interesting too is if you trade you can obviously lie when you're trading for certain things and say you have certain things and you don't have certain things whether you believe that person you're trading with is a neighbor or maybe a kid and you are the neighbor so there is a little bit of trickery involved in that phase as well and of course after somebody gets a key they'll have the opportunity to try and unlock one of the doors and if they do unlock one of the doors that will satisfy one of the two conditions if a neighbor unlocks the door the game's over the neighbors win if a kid unlocks the door based on the number of keys in the game that kid will be out and the rest of the kids will try and unlock the doors with the rest of the keys or if there's no more keys left the kids are going to win and how that works is pretty simple i've got a key i want to unlock the door anybody want to second me i'll second you says jenny from the block and then everybody votes they go yes or no if more yeses than no's or uh, then then the kid can unlock the door or neighbor if there are more no's than yeses or a tie then the kid does not get to open the door but will keep the key in front of them and then the phases will still just simply go out again you'll be discarding cards drawing new ones shuffling the back in and making sure everybody have the same number of cards and then going to the trading phase so on and so forth attempting to get either the neighbors if you can or the kids if you can unlocking those doors with these keys based on the number of players pretty simple pretty straightforward the theming is based on the game hello neighbor in which case you're trying to gather keys to unlock that specific door to then find out if the lady or whoever it might be that is in the house is safe and you're doing this courteous thing hopefully now well, that's pretty much it for the game uh, as you can see all the components have pretty high quality pretty straightforward something similar to the resistance let's talk about the game Hello Neighbor, the video game, is a suspense style game in which you're trying to hide from this computer animated neighbor that runs around and can kind of predict your movement and guess where you are and stop you from getting inside the house. And this one does a fairly good job of it for being a trader game. Now of course in this game you might have multiple neighbors, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense as far as the theme of the game goes, but regardless that is there. This game is kind of what my little scythe is to scythe it is hello neighbor secret party game or secret neighbor game is to resistance or is to any of those other trader based games it is the kids version it is the family a like young family you know like eight and up can play this game fairly easily it's pretty simple you're either a neighbor or you're not a neighbor you're the bad guy or you're the good guy kids and you're trying to trade weapons and whatnot and attempt to enter the house or get the key from the kids but the same objective is it's the same regardless of the objective because you're just trying to get the key and let let everybody let you open the door and it's pretty straightforward people are going to be voting or not voting it functions in a lot of those resistance style games and if you've played modern board games before you probably have an idea of how this game plays if you're newer to this and you've never heard of this game before or any games that are a trader game just simply understand that it's going to be more of a social game it's going to have a lot of social interactions and as you play the game you're going to be lying and trying to manipulate your opponents in order Order to fool them into thinking that you're a kid if you're a neighbor or trying to convince all the kids that you're a kid when trying to open the door so everybody's kind of out for themselves even though they're kind of all working in certain little secret teams and sex the most unique about this game of course is the items gathering sets of items and playing them together and doing the abilities now of course with the game when you want to play cards you can just play them whenever you want during a phase and that lends to some problems. That being said, they do have a variant where whoever touches the box in the middle will be able to decide to go first or not, which can help certain things. But my first critique about the game is going to be that there are certain cards that require to be played after other cards. So in some cases, people will hold on to a card. So that, for instance, there's a certain item that will let you steal a card from somebody's hand. That's a card you're gonna to wanna to play first. Whereas there's a card called the, the switch or whatever you wanna call it, the lever. And that one can steal a power after somebody's played it. So you're going to sit on that and wait for somebody to play that. 
And if people know that that ability is in play, it's very unlikely they're going to want to play their card because they know that you're going to try and mess with their ability. And that can slow down gameplay a bit. This, day, this game, actually, if you're playing with a straight, like, strategic older adults, it is going to go longer because players are going to be a lot more meticulous about when they want to play things and if they want to play things and how they're going to play things. And the rounds can kind of progress a little too long. Because this game it feels like it's supposed to be really quick, really simple, but with little kids, it functions that way pretty well. Because people, kids just want to drop cards down, play it really quick, and it has that dynamic which feels good. So remember, when you're playing with the older side of the family, it's going to be probably a little more, I would say, a little more, a little less strategic, a little more monotonous. When we're playing with kids, it's going to be a lot better. So resistance probably for that side, kids, this is going to be the specific thing that kids are going to really enjoy. It's very easy to understand. There's not as much manipulation required in this game as games like Resistance and those other type of games, the uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf and Revolution, etc, etc. This one is just like a nice refresher course for those other games. And it has that one unique class, which is the Secret Neighbor, which is nice. It reminds me of other games that have the Secret Neighbor, or the Secret Character that knows they're bad but doesn't know who else is on their team. And like I said, it's just good gateway material for other games. All the artwork is great. The game has that style and feel of Hello Neighbor. You have that suspense because you don't know who the bad guy is or who the bad guy isn't as you play the game. The trading phase is fun, even though slightly flawed. The keys are beautiful, and they feel, ju they, they feel just like I would imagine the kid was holding in the game. I really like these guys. These are really nice, high quality. And I was actually surprised they had these in there. I thought I wasn't sure what to expect, but these are exceptional little keys and fun and of course when you're playing this game you want to play with more players and I mean more and more get it up at 8, 9, and 10 because with more players comes more keys in a smaller game six or less you're only playing with one key and that ends the game after one key and the thing is it can be less interesting in a shorter player, a smaller player game, especially just like in any in any trader game. That's not a critique just for this game, but in general, it comes down to just one player opening the door, one player doing the mission or whatever, and that can just trigger the end of the game fairly instantly, and you won't get as much pizzazz. Where if you're playing a larger game, the wins and victories feel better. Uh, I've played the Hello Neighbor game for the consoles, like I said, and I've played this one quite a few times now. And they do feel very nice as theme. The artwork is great. Quality of the cards and everything is really solid. But the game is specifically made for kids. This is going to be your kids' first My Little Trader game. My first Trader game. Definitely something to pick up for them, which is great because the IP kind of works with them as well. That The game is actually kind of like a suspense game for kids and whatnot, even though for me personally, I got really scared while I was playing the game. I had to have somebody else play next to me as I was playing it, but I really did enjoy it. And this one's a lot of fun too. It's just something I'm only ever going to break out when I'm playing with younger audiences, or specifically, I would narrate and help kids play this game as they all play it together, and I simply sit back and explain what needs to happen and watch the interactions, because sometimes it's just as fun to watch these games as it is to play them. If you have kids and you have groups of kids in party groups or birthday parties, any of that kind of thing, this is going to work really well. If you have kids that really enjoy the Hello Neighbor game, this is a good way to transition them from one avid, one one console to another, which now you have you went from console to analog, board games, and that's a, way, a good way to do that as well. Bringing these IPs that kids play and putting them into board games and making them fun and interesting and unique and giving that modern board game twist. All in all, I really love that. Is it something I'm going to play generally by myself or with my gamer friends? No, but I will be keeping it just specifically for that event where I'm going to have kids over. Thank you for watching my review for the game The Secret Neighbor Party Game by Tiny Build and Arcane Wonders. If you're interested in picking the game up, the link will be down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up for your kids and your family. And I want to know, what do you think about the game? Is it something you'd pick up? If not, why not? And leave any of the information you have down below in the comments, especially if you uh, like the game. Was it tricky for you, even the video game specifically, because I had a <laughs> very difficult time with that game, understanding what I needed to do. Maybe it's because I'm getting to be boomer age or something, I don't know. But I had fun, not huh, puppy. Well, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Check out our Cali's Corner giveaway, link in the description as well. It's on the website on filtergamer.com. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to, uh, I guess I'd be getting the key and entering the house of the man and breaking in to see what's going on in his house. Seems very obtrusive. Probably should just call the cops, really.